first of the daytime national shows in Australia. With it could be you, right? Yes. Yeah, you came out here essentially. You're going to do this to me, aren't you? <laughs> I, know, I can see it in your face. You're going to do this to me. Yes. Why did you come to Australia? Uh, there, try and say yes. I was in <laughs> London and uh, I went to New York and he asked me to come over and do uh, four weeks with Graham on The Tonight Show. Right. And I did very well with Graham and he liked me, so I ended up doing six months. So then I had to go back to uh, New York to do six months of contracts I had, and they booked me back on IMT. And they said, would you like to do an afternoon show? And I said, yep, because, uh, you know, I'm tired of traveling all my life. Mm -hmm. And when we were doing It Could Be You, we ended up doing about 50, 60,000 miles a year filming and everything anyway, you know, which I loved. You know. <laughs> right. One of the big things about It Could Be You... Yes was your reunions. Yes. Now, this is something I know you put into the show. You, you rearranged the show as it was originally formatted, and this is one of the things that you decided must go into the show. Right. right. And you always, just to give the fake at home an, an, an idea, you had three people there, a voice in the background. Sometimes. And, and one of them knew the voice in the background, but the other two didn't. And right. it was a big surprise, the reveal of some relative they hadn't seen for ages. Right. Can I show you a very special reunion that was done on It Could Be You? Am I going to look into your eyes or is there a monitor Would yours? you care to look, look into my eyes? Oh. Are you ready? Right. It Could Be You, yes. Tommy Hanlon. Me? Yeah. Our third and most important clue will be by our mystery relative, him or herself. Would you speak up? I'm sorry, Tommy. This is Jill. There is no clue today because the mystery guest is your own mother. <laughs> I wondered why I haven't heard from you. Now you know. <laughs> How'd you get over here? I flew. By myself. All by yourself? Mm. How long can you stay? I don't know. You don't know? No. You can stay a while with me, can't you? Yes, yes. Uh, this is my mother. <laughs> and, uh... Uh... <laughs> Did you have a nice flight? Yes. <laughs> I am Ruthie. Yes. <laughs> I call her Ruthie. Uh, but over here, I call her mother. You know, but to, to her, I call her Ruthie. And I have since I've been about a year or two, year, two years old. And all. Uh, this is quite a surprise, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I would say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all the way from Lexington. Yes. It was to me when they called me, too. Now, you know, uh, real, really, this is going to be... Uh, uh, I, I have an awful feeling that I'll wake up. And uh, it, it won't be, it won't happen. Oh, uh, I'm here. I'm yeah. here. Well, we'll be back in one, mu one minute, both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think everybody sitting in this room would know that that was a real surprise to you because your mother gave you so many straight lines there to hit. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, actually, uh, Murphy knew about it, and I didn't. And oh, it's a long, Murphy. long story, very involved. Uh, Murphy was flying to New York, but then they just said they were going to bring my mother over as a surprise. So she said, if I stay here, he'll know, because he's very shrewd on these things. So she said, I'll have to go. So my mother came over, and I was working with Frank Sinatra at the old tin shed. Who? In Frank Sinatra. Oh, I've heard of him, yeah. And uh, <laughs> that'll get back to him. I'll tell him. <laughs> I'm living the country. <laughs> right. And uh, I was working the tin shed, and Tom Miller called up, who was booking me then, and he said, uh, you'll have to get on the 8 o'clock plane Sunday, because we close Saturday night in Sydney. I says, why? They're going to have a big party and everything. He says, well, uh, the planes are all booked out, and we want to make sure you get back so we can start taping Monday on It Could Be You. And uh, the reason they did it is because uh, they were worried about when my mother was going to fly in. So she flew in, and uh, Mike Dyer picked her up, bless her heart, his heart, and uh, drove her all around Sydney, and there was a spy there, and they said, he's on the plane, and there was a spy <laughs> at Essendon then, and said, he's, he just got off. We're devious. Oh, we are devious. And, uh, but oh, what a, my mother said he should never have done that to him. He, he could have had a heart attack. <laughs> Can, can I put you on the, on the spot? Sure. You have never, ever been without a letter from your mother. 
No. Have you got one? Well, you asked me if I was going to do one. Just as well. <laughs> yeah, because we've got a stool and I'd hate to see it sitting there by itself. I'd love to do one. Would you? Yeah. You bet your sweet bippy. Right. How about there? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst that's happening, folks. Hey. Well, that, what's going to happen to you? Oh, uh, already? Don't look now, oh. you're on. Oh, I got a letter from Mother. For the benefit of the younger people watching, uh, I w did this for, all oh, about 20 years uh, on television. And a lot of people said, uh, you know, why did you first come to uh, Australia? Well, I come from a little town originally called Lexington, Kentucky. And there's not much doing there. I tell you how small it is. Our fire department consists of four dogs. <laughs> They're big dogs. <laughs> but they could put out any flame we ever had. And there wasn't much to do. Like Saturday night, we all used to get dressed up and go down and watch the grocery truck unload. And then we'd try and guess what was in the boxes. And then we'd go over to the hotel and see who rented the room. <laughs> Swinging, you know. So that's the reason I bring that up. Because I do come from Lexington, Kentucky, and my mother wrote me a letter, and she says, Dear Tommy Jean, I wish he wouldn't call me that. That's my real name, but, you know, Tommy Jean. Just a note so you'll have something to do on television. <laughs> By the way, where's Silver Circus now? Oh! It's at Churnside Park, and then we go to Vermont, and then Sandown Park. So, uh, you know. I'm so glad you're working with Dixie Duncan again. She sounds like a lovely girl. I have told her a hundred times, Dixie is a fellow, see? But she says, no, Dixie is a girl's name. And I'm not gonna argue with her. Your brother Lance, uh, he's a butch window dresser. <laughs> he had a very bad accident yesterday. A steamroller ran over his finger. Unfortunately, he was picking his nose at the time. <laughs> Your Uncle Howard said hello. Oh, he's an inventor. I used to talk about him all the time. He's the fellow that crossed a praying mantis with a white ant. And he got a bug that said prayers before he ate your house. <laughs> he was a strange one. <laughs> said he just crossed a carpet with Dolly Parton. Doesn't know what he's got, but it's great to walk on barefoot. <laughs> He was a weird man. He used to work in a sardine factory. And uh, just before they sealed the lid, he used to close all the sardines' eyes, you know. <laughs> now you're laughing. How'd you like to open up a can of sardines and have 24 eyes like this? <laughs> Throw you off. Ah, oh, your stepfather took me to a Billy Graham revival meeting last night. Oh, and Larry Adler, the famous harmonica player, was guest artist. Halfway through his first number, all the holes in his harmonica suddenly healed up. <laughs> Remember our next door neighbor, Clovely Shovel? Oh, he was a wild man. He invented the Weight Watcher gunpowder diet. He died Thursday. <laughs> Left a wife, two children, and a big hole where the crematorium used to be. <laughs> I don't understand that either. I got a letter from Murphy the other day. I didn't know you wrote her. Says you don't have any patience anymore. That's a lie, I've got patience. I once sat through a whole Lovelace Watkins concert. <laughs> Your grandfather and grandmother got a divorce. Oh, that's bad news. He's 98 and she's 97. I asked him how come, he said, I can't stand her. I said, you've been married for 77 years. He said, we wanted to wait until the children died. That's weird. Your old girl, girlfriend, Gloria, dropped by yesterday. <laughs> she was a lovely girl. She had a ponytail. Only trouble was she had it where the pony had it. 
You used to wear Orson Welles designer jeans. <laughs> she was weird. She was half Indian and half Harley Davidson. <laughs> I bought her a bag of peaches once. She thought they were suede apples. <laughs> I remember once when we were kids, we were walking out in the woods. We were about nine, ten years old, and she found this little lizard with a broken leg. And she loved animals as I do. And she took the little lizard home and she got two uh, matchsticks and some cotton and wrapped it around its broken leg. And she fed it about 10 times a day with a, a, a little, uh, oh, what are those things you plunge? Eyedropper, thank you very much. <laughs> Just want to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> and uh, she rubbed its skin with oil because she was worried about it drying out and everything. And about three months later it got well and she made a wallet out of it. <laughs> Saw a weird thing last week. I was shopping in Graves Cox Depot. That's like Myers and Grace Brothers and all. Graves Cox, that's as high as you can go, you know. And this one-legged Scotchman wearing a kilt was standing in the lamp department. <laughs> and this girl came along and was changing the light bulbs. I don't think I'll ever eat a hot cross bun again. <laughs> well, a joke for you to tell everybody. It's about the nearsighted whale. Oh, I know this one. He fell in love with an atomic submarine and he followed all around the world. And every time the submarine fired a torpedo, the whale passed out cigars. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, by now the audience should be hysterical. So we'll close for now. May God love you and keep you from, oh, your loving mother. <laughs> and she left a little thought for the day. Do you remember when black power was prune juice? Tommy, you're beautiful, thank you. You're beautiful, thank you. <laughs> Look, we're, we're, we've got to go to a commercial, but before we do, uh, the latest total I have here is $475,021. Bless you, folks. You're wonderful. I didn't have a chance to talk to them. <laughs> we're back after this break, okay?